to everyone, it's Ada from Poison Rock and today it's my real pleasure to have with us Cinema Stereo and uh, I want to say first of all how are you guys and welcome here. How are you doing? Uh, good to see you. It's a pleasure, I'm okay, tired, a little bit tired but it's good to have you here and I mean we started the, the first things ever, introducing each one of you. All right, we'll go from left to right. Sure, I'll go first. My name's Sebastian Borisek. I'm lead guitar. My name's Ian Reha. I uh, sing lead vocal, play bass, and play keyboards. My name's Luke Pate, and I play drums. Okay. So, of course, I mean, uh, it's a little bit tough playing keyboards and singing guitar and bass and singing, bass and singing. A little bit difficult. It's it's a little bit of a, of a juggle. He's uh, got B pedals, too, <laughs> but I have a... I'm, I've, I've learned to uh, kind of like, you know, necessity was like the mother of invention with that. So, um, but yeah, it's fun. And now I really enjoy doing it. And I can't really like um, doing just one thing at a show seems weird. So it helps. It helps my brain, you know, it yeah. helps me with the ADD, multiple <laughs> things to do at once. Yeah, of course. I mean, before just to start speaking about how cinema stereo, stereo started, sorry, I'm going to say in Italian because stereo, it's stereo, stereo, whatever. How do you prefer to pronounce it? Mm -hmm. I say it. However, however you like to say it, as long as, <laughs> you, as, long as you can remember it. Yeah. In Italy, it's like basically yeah. cinema stereo, 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 whatever. But it doesn't stereo. matter. It, it, even if I'm from yeah. Italy, I tend to give the American accent to anything, even to if you say coffee in Italian, say caffè even with the, with the accent. But anyhow, I want to ask you to start each one of you, the background in the music scene. So how you started, guys? Like each one of you, how started getting touch with music and which was the main influences that you had growing up? So we go back forward to the influence now. So we go, we go to left, right, center. Sorry, we can start with one. Luke, yeah. Um, so I grew up in a house where there was always, uh, there was a drum kit in the house. And uh, it was a, it was pretty much a clothes clothing rack and a dust collector for the longest time. Uh, my dad would play from time to time, but he never. It it was just something he did every now and then, and uh, I was always that weird kid that was like banging on everything and making weird noises and stuff. And uh, <laughs> drums was stimulating enough, and um, I just would play for. I'd lose track of time and I, I would end up playing for 10 hours straight. Yeah. And, uh, it was an, it was an electronic kit and, uh, Start. that just, you know, I would play until they would tell me to quit playing. And then I'd, I'd go to a music store and play until they told me to leave or I'd, um, or, you know, I, I, I'd make a, I'd put pillows around me in a 360. So I had the Neil Peer drum kit. And I would just play there and I was just, I was really annoying, but, um, <laughs> and then I've always had a fascination with, uh, uh, anything really cinema related, yeah. but, um, dad had this massive VHS collection and, uh, he had a, a Rubbermaid, uh, it was all music related. And, uh, I've just, I arbitrarily just pulled one out one day. And uh, it happened to be uh, Rush, and it blew me away. And then it was kind of at that moment where I was like, "That's what I'm gonna do." Yeah. So that's kind of that's my story. <laughs> um, <clears throat> for me, it was um, I was probably around like seven or eight years old, and um, my mom bought me like a Walkman, like CD player that I could like walk around with. Yeah. And um had like ACDC's live album and then Aerosmith's greatest hits. So I would just play those two a bunch. And then through listening to those, um, I guess I asked to play guitar. I have no memory of like asking to want to play guitar, but I just remember all of a sudden being in lessons. Okay. <laughs> so, but my, my parents say I begged to play guitar, but I have no memory of that. Um, but yeah. And I just, I had a knack for it from early age. I picked up things quicker than like most kids. Like my dad would always say that like, he would try to play guitar and his fingers just didn't do it. But like, for me, I was able to like put it together very quickly. Um, I've always had an ear for that kind of thing. Um, and then just as I moved into like young adulthood and into college, I started to get more into like having, you know, not having like a regular job. I didn't really ever see myself having a regular desk kind of job. Yeah. 
and that led to really pursue going all in on music. And luckily, I met these few guys along the way. I lost the way, like in the street, I lost the, uh, yeah. Well, I met I met Sebastian in a uh, in like a music program we were doing. Like it was like it was like teens, you know, getting together and playing music, playing cover songs. And that's how I met Sebastian. Okay. And then Workshop. we met Luke through Facebook. Okay. So, so we can but, say, let's say the story already or how cinema stereo started, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But um for me, how I got introduced, I've just always been around music since you know I was super young. Um, my dad was a guitar player and he used to love like all the all the 80s bands and stuff. So he always had like Skid Row, Guns N' Roses, and all those bands playing. Mm -hmm. And um, that one, you know, that got me into playing guitar. So I started around seven and just been playing ever since. So I've just been in love with it. So, uh, yeah, studied a little bit of classical guitar. Now I'm, you know, very inspired by like blues musicians, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, all the kings, the three kings, of course. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, uh, I I just have so, always been in love with it. Yeah, so basically, let's say that the influences, uh, the musical influences of each one of you were kind of similar in a kind of way, or there are some difference in your in your own uh, individual musical influences. Yeah, I'd say like we all have like influences that kind of work together, whereas like I feel like. When it came to guitar playing side, he's always been way more interested in the solo aspects okay. of guitar playing. Whereas like, I was like always about like what's the chorus, and then he's always been really interested in like alternative rhythms, progressive <laughs> rhythms. Confusion. Yeah. It's like very jazz, very jazz over yeah. here. Yeah. So like you know you put that together, you'll you know you have everyone kind of focusing on different things and hearing what they hear and he comes out with something unique at the other side yeah so. yeah because uh like the sound is not it's like a, a, a mixture of uh, i don't know eight, 70s 80s 90s uh early 2000 uh, there is each uh, let's say a little bit of influences uh, and the music for every decade even from 60s in uh, i think because yeah so that that, yeah. that really is like things because you know bands like the struts and stuff were kind yeah. of like maybe like the the catalyst for like because yeah we listen to a lot of older stuff and we're just like i don't know you know how cool this is really and then you see like newer bands like the strokes the struts arctic monkeys cage the elephant maniskin and like doing their thing and you're like i, I can do that you know yeah and greta van fleet like i, I can do that kind of thing yeah, but there's something, uh, because I, I got the interview, I mean, uh, I had the, um, the, the pleasure to get the interview with the Strat and to speak with, uh, to speak with Luke, and uh, he's um, an artist, he's, let's say, like um, a unique persona, with his own style, and, um, but that's uh, really like, you know, this, the, the, the type of music that you can put it, yeah, in the art rock, but has a lot, has a lot as well of, uh, let's say indie music from the 2000, a lot. But mm -hmm. what I can see in cinema, there is something a bit more different, more for everyone, more, but at the same time belonging to a niche. It's, uh, I don't want to mm -hmm. say are better than because they are good as well, but I think because uh, you have a lot, of, a lot of as well of interaction with the people in the social media, you are all the time joking. Uh, that's kind of being more like, uh, we are like, every one of us. There's no one upon the others. That's something really that I like about uh, Cinema Stereo. And that's something that brought, bring bands far. That's... Um, How did you come across us? Because I, I was just, I don't know, just appear on the For You page on TikTok and I was just start, starting to watch your profile. I was like, oh, I like this band. The sounds, uh, yeah. yeah, it sounds like the struts, but it is not like the struts. It's not like uh, struts. Uh, I came from the 2000 indie, from, from Franz Ferdinand, the Arctic Monkeys, uh, Libertines. I grew up with that music. and uh, But I grew up as well with glam rock, like uh, Skid Row, Whitesnake, and all this stuff, uh, the Zeppelin, uh, even that metal. That's uh, nothing similar. It's all of that, because I see as well a little bit of The Wolf. I don't know if you don't know the band called The Wolf. The Wolf, they are from Netherlands. 
They okay. are three guys, but there are like tons of people in the stage with keyboard. They are insanely. And I see maybe a little bit more similarity with them. Like uh, with this fresh and funny and chill vibe. And uh, I and I and I thought that they remember me a lot of uh, how they are in personality and how they have joke and laugh of the wolf and I want to interview them because uh, that's a short for a band that's not gonna stay on the TikTok platform, whatever. And I, because and I saw that because they are touring and performing a lot live. Yeah. I think it's just for us, it's, um we've we've always, we felt that like some bands like you know I feel like I've always viewed it as like there's no way you can make like one style of music because no. you go you go on your your Spotify and you listen to a bunch of different stuff. So yeah. it's always weird and has like one style all the time. So yeah. I think like for us, we've always like we've always like bands like the Beatles and stuff, and they're very they're very eclectic and they do a lot of different things and they don't take themselves too seriously. Exactly. Uh, Queen's like my big influence, and yeah. Queen's like very like was very progressive in their approach to music early on. So yeah. I think it's just having fun with it, you know, not yeah. taking it all too seriously, but also taking it very seriously at the same time. It's like yeah. always exactly. putting out the best product. Exactly. And especially when you start to put up, um, like, uh, like releasing your own music, you don't have any more that uh, labeling of uh, the, the, look, they are playing in the folk, they are playing, I don't know, hard rock. It's just uh, yeah. a rock in general. Because yeah, because yeah, you could put some of our songs in the art rock category, like one of our longer songs. You could say it's more art rock, but then you have shorter songs that are more. Yeah, because yeah, pop, one really pop. long song. <laughs> we said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did it come out to do a, such a really long song? Because some people could say, "Oh, they did, they are like the dream theater or of uh, hard rock or yeah. rock." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing is, just, it just happened naturally. Like it was. Well, that's what I was gonna say about your last question is that we yeah. don't, it, it, we don't really put too much thought into that. It just kind of turns out that way, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just write what you like. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, and about this song that of uh, if it was fourteen minutes long, something like that. No, it's it's like nine. Nine minutes long. Okay, so it's not. I mean, it's kind of in between, and um. Yeah, it's sections. Are, it's not. It's yeah. not just. You were like scared that people maybe could be bored about it because sometimes you know we want like the short song. Sometimes, sometimes. It kind of it kind of ties in with that whole. Uh, you mentioned that there's no you can't really pinpoint a, a, a niche. Yeah. Or at least you don't think that that's something that we we try to consider. Uh, yeah. We we don't and uh, we you know the song kind of I feel like at a certain point. From watching them and you know I yeah. my own ways of doing things I feel like the song at some point just kind of writes itself you know, like this is what it needs calling for this and yeah. so you have to you gotta I mean like you gotta feed it you know we're aware we're like aware of the niche I just think we're aware of like who listens to our music but if we're not bored with it then that's the what? biggest thing you know if it's not more if it's not boring to us, then someone else will also find it exciting. So yeah, about that because say, that's yeah. Was that like people say it doesn't feel that long? Like yeah, yeah. If people say it feel like a nine minute song. Yeah, because as well when you have like oh, the, the, the the fun, the, the the this interaction, this beautiful chemistry, there is a which like which with uh, each one of you because of course I think with along the way along the road you create a kind of sort of familiar bond like like really close and um, you don't perceive uh, like that toughness of uh, let's say dream theater song i mean I, you can understand i don't like dream theater but the heaviness of a 15 14 10 minute song um because when a song is could be even 10 minutes but when it, you know it has that changes in the sound in the riffs in a, a little bit even in an you don't notice that because your music and I did it. I'm not ashamed to say I put it in the morning while um, I'm cleaning the house and dancing all around the houses. I put it better times like two, three times by now because I wanted to be ready for the. And it goes good. Well, not not for only cleaning the house, just even for you know like uh, having fun, just uh, yeah. re reflecting as well. Yeah, I mean, I think like 
I'd always say like our music is very energetic. If you see our, like our live performances, we bring more of like um. You are fucking frontman. Let me say it. You are fucking frontman. Thank you. Yeah, you it's are. like our, our songs are are sophisticated or adult oriented, um, yeah. but we bring an energy that's very youthful and energetic to us, and it and it Indeed. takes into account the way rock music has been for the last sixty years. It's not just focusing on one sound, so. Oh. it's it's a it's an experience it's not just um exactly one thing because we with your sound i think that you can play for example in the in, let's say let's put it like a, in a festival or something even with band that are performing like glam rock band that are performing heavy metal or 60s music there's you can be you you can play with like a lot of genre in music that's the beauty yeah. I mean, tomorrow we're playing a show that's mostly pop country artists, but we put us right in the middle and it's you know, a nice cool. change of pace and it'll, it'll be fun. That's cool. There's no you have a track record of appealing to yeah. you know, multiple groups of people, we probably wouldn't have taken you know this gig up. But It's yeah. probably like one of those things like being diverse. It's like it's a blessing and a curse because when people can't categorize you, it's difficult exactly. for them to you in something like in a spotify playlist or in this but it, it opens up many opportunities because you don't fit anywhere like concrete yeah this isn't even like our first country like, no no uh, we, play, we played with uh what was her name Caroline jones yeah Caroline Caroline jones. Jones. yeah, yeah. She, she tours a zach brown band yeah it's just like just you know because people I'm hear certain songs you. of ours and they yeah <laughs> okay. i think it's People hear a song and they they say like oh it would fit with this artist but then they don't hear the other seven songs or something and then that would fit with another artist so I can't imagine what we'll we'll on Spotify. Fresh. To think about things like that, it's not really it's not your issue. It's it's an issue that's being brought to your attention all the time. So it's not like yeah you know we're just musicians at the end of the day. Yeah, but mm -hmm. do something that it's kind of refreshing because uh, we had a, a lot of bands new newer bands let's say coming out and doing amazing music but even if you know it's kind of music sound that you kind of heard that is not completely new there's something i don't know what's going on but something fresh that even for myself i stopped i stopped for example sometimes listen to band like for example white snake for months and starting to listen more like you cinema stereo or other bands like this guy the wolf putting in the morning mm -hmm. and just uh, you know waking up with the uh, positive vibes with the positive attitude uh, and uh, that's uh, something that it's important when and, and you realize that a, a musician band is doing good music when uh, you stop for a moment to listen to the bigger band and start to listen more to what is new because mm -hmm. at the time people go to look you know to the bigger bands they go to the bigger concert and we should, uh, let's say, switch or shift this a little bit. That's why I was interested yeah. in Cinema Stereo. Well, I don't think the the success of a band is like I don't think it. I don't think it accurately reflects the music all the time. I think I think uh, I think they're they're able to a lot of times be. Uh, compared to other things and it's more it's more uh you can put more you can you can back it a little bit more well it's like people do people are support what they know and also like you know there's a lot of, it's like all the it's like the harry styles and taylor swift up here and then it's like there's a big discrepancy of like what people purchase tickets for like people will go see harry styles 10 times in a year spend thousands of dollars to go sit in the front row but they won't go out to a local show for ten dollars so this it's is, just is everywhere everywhere in certain yeah people just don't realize that local shows are much more intimate like they're much more yeah. intimate environments but you actually get to interact with the artists and it's exactly. uh, like i don't know we're all better energy i mean even you know the touring artists that play those huge stadiums they you know say that it just doesn't feel personal you know like yeah. you're just kind of on repeat every night and it, yeah. it loses that factor and like you know something that you kind of fall in love with with playing live no yeah but yeah, it, uh, yeah. yeah because sometimes as well when you go in this uh, like let's say a small venue but it can be as well an opening gig or something it's something that creates a bond with the with with the fan and then even growing up uh being a bigger band 
of course you can play as well because this is this something that when I was interviewing you know the bigger band they even told me that they would prefer playing a smaller venue because like what you're saying that they have the sort of intimacy with the with the fan and that mm. even having a talk or just changing the microphone uh, doing silly things together uh, surf crowding whatever it's just that you create something different in memories and um, but as well like uh, when I Talk a little bit about better times because uh, the songs were amazing. But in all, because of course, uh, let's say that for the European uh, people, let's uh, it's an uh, let's pretend it is the first time they're gonna hear you. But I don't think so because uh, someone from England reached me out. So I think they know you yeah. already, uh, and England especially. Um, so if you wanna just really talk about better times, like uh, which is the main core of of the like topic, like so lyric wise. What is the main topic of the lyric? Yeah, like uh, where you take many influences, be daily life, books, nature, movies. I think uh, it was just something that. Uh, life. <laughs> yeah, it was. Life, usually, yeah. usually, what happens like when I like will be writing lyrics is just I'm basically just scatting around the song until I find a line that I can latch onto and then build the story around. And I'm generally not a very like pessimistic or down person okay. so I had to build a lyric around having it be have an, an optimistic outlook along the end because like I listen to music as an escape I don't really understand people that listen to music to cry and feel upset like I'm always trying to listen to music to feel happier and I don't excited know. try to listen some music from White Snake, really or from Steel Art you can jump all around the house they have, they touch the nerves and you have a tear. That's what yeah. I yeah. Well, you can cry from happiness and stuff too. It's just like I never like really want to just I guess have a song at least like even if it's about being sad or something. It's got to have like some kind of like up some kind of like um res yeah resolution. It can't just be like life sucks and that's how it is. No, no it's just no. not how it's not. It's not my personality. I have to like it's got to be like, but it's gonna get better. Yeah, because that gives hope to, for example, yeah. the, the most common thing is the heartbreak, heartbroken, whatever. They just put in there, and even if it's uh, like um, some band used to write in the 80s, like What Lie, and they say there is life even after a broken heart. For example, this mm -hmm. is the main things. They put something and a hope in the music. So this is a good thing because we, but it's, not, it's just, you know, the bad period, bad times in life. When you listen to song, it has to bring you as well kind of a hops. It was written. Well, it was also written like in the midst of the COVID pandemic. So it was like yeah, it was, it was everything on everything on the album was written like with kind of like that thing going on in the world where it was like it was like I feel like that was the first time in my life where people no longer viewed like the future like as being better than what like yeah. people like every year people were just like world's getting worse and it's and I'm just like I don't want to agree with that because I'm young I don't want to think the future is going to suck no. I'd rather think the future is better I think even people of 16 years 60 years old they should think that the future is going to be brighter and focusing maybe yeah. more on the present maybe maybe yeah not more too much in the future so the all the albums have been written during the pandemic uh, how I, I was the, the process of writing because uh, written during the pandemic but it was recorded later because it wasn't uh, it was during the pandemic well I mean a lot of the songs like it's just when you're you know the world's kind of closed and the yeah. world's slowed down like you can play shows for like a year it's kind of like when the band formed so we were just you know practicing amongst ourselves just like yeah uh, discussing ideas and like going through things um and then once like the world opened back up we like started to play shows and then we had to like really refine the song so we could play a live set so most of the songs are finished just because we really wanted to play live yeah. um so there is a kind of like a spontaneity to how yeah, they yeah. were finished yeah but that is why we just... started to release the first video clip what was that that's as well the period because uh, around one years ago you start you started to release the first music video. Yeah, so yeah. it was like we we like we can tell that story. What what is it on music again? No, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But what about it? Well, we had one that came out 
way before the one that okay. you that you're aware of um so so yeah we it we, just wasn't we, very good we were considering music videos so earlier than what is portrayed i guess we yeah. just were really like naive but you have to be when you first start like we we were only, we'd only played like five shows and we were like let's go in the studio let's record an album and <laughs> we were in way over our heads you know like we yeah. spent so much time on like three or four of the songs and then like only had a day left to finish the other like half of the songs and just when you're first starting you're always it's you have big plans and big goals and as you go through being a band you start to learn more and more and more and you kind of look back what you do differently but then use that to change yeah. your approach going forward you learn a lot in a couple of years i mean i the, as your your speeches may it band like after 20 years of playing can do me the same they make me the same speech as you did so congratulations for being so wise in two years so you learn a lot really i'm not joking really. no nothing we're trying I mean, you know oh, we trying. we hope to you know, we hope that uh you know i try not to make the same mistake twice as much as i can you know i don't want to beat my head against a brick wall for too long you know but i think that with your music but as well with the personality you have you can i don't know if you have already planned you can be uh, touring around europe and uh, i think other country in the world easily because uh, your music it's music that beats being really appreciated and uh, listened to by people around the world and especially in europe so i can see you completely playing even in a festival called the Rodburn in holland in netherlands mm -hmm. yeah i mean look at I'm gonna give. Yeah. I'm gonna send you the name of this festival. This uh, there are two band like uh, even this band uh, the Wolf played there, and a lot of indie folk, uh, hard rock band, band plays there. It's a beautiful festival. That's like my whole thing with the band in general. I tell everybody I meet, I'm like, if if a million people heard our music, eighty percent of them would become fans. Yeah, it's just the visibility. It's like when we are. When you're starting out, there's like not as much visibility, but like if if we were given the same visibility as some artists, I think we'd be just as successful. Yeah, of course. If not more successful. And that's as well, because like you, uh, you produce everything by yourself. You're not still on the, you're, you're not under, under some label yet. Mm -mm. We do everything going, like. You want to keep going like by your own? Or. Um, no, I mean, like the goal is to like get signed by somebody. Um, but. Um, I guess like the the best thing ever would be to carve your own path out to where somebody just wants to help you do your own thing versus trying yeah. to make you do what they want you to do kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because that's uh, sometimes with some label, not all the label in, in the world, they, let's say, they tell you what you should do uh, or when you should release your music, how you should do your music video. And I think that after a little while doing things as you want it's gonna be like you know it's like stressful and frustrating like and some yeah. bands are just like saying no yeah, yeah he will because you want people to help you know it is stressful doing everything yourself but you don't want to like lose control of like what you initially i guess intended because exactly. there's always going to be like there's always going to be like discussions and like what you how you want to be portrayed and yeah. that's completely normal but it's like when you lose control of the thing you created yeah then that's when it gets out of hand yeah but as well like uh, your your album i mean already you're thinking about something new to work on are you still want to focus about on um, on better times and uh, spread the word with that um we have a new song coming out okay. um it'll be coming out in february of, okay uh, in a month there is um, a date of release we're just we're about to announce it, so okay, this okay, is like okay. exclusive information. Don't worry, this but, will uh, be released in February, so we can be. <laughs> um, yeah, so we do have new music coming out. There is a plan to release like a new okay. EP around the summertime. Um, cool. Yeah, I think we're just, like I said, taking everything we know from the past and our oh. back catalog will get a recognition, you know, just by promoting new music, you know. Okay. Um, but we're taking everything that we've learned in the past and we're going to make some new songs and you know, hopefully get some traction off of that to keep moving forward. Always with the same life. Yeah. Well, definitely our goal is to get on the festival circuit by next year. Like we want to, you know, next year we, we want to be playing festivals. I can see in Finland. Um, so we're going to yeah. work pretty hard this year to fill up our schedule and um, build, you know, keep growing our following to where yeah. we can start having opportunities all over. 
But you have some live shows already booked because I see a little bit in the social media that you have live shows booked already. So, of course, not for European people, but we have people in the US too. So where um, these shows going to take place? So um, if, well, we do have shows coming up at the end of the month in Florida. Okay. Um, but honestly, this whole year, we're going to be booking um, all across the United States because we have just committed ourselves to that. We're going to be as busy as possible for the next year. And we are going to play anywhere and everywhere as much as possible. Yeah, cool. So for you know, like a hundred goal, hundred shows for us is going to be the minimum. We're going to try and get done this year. That's, that's going on full tour, like uh, having a van and get lost uh, in the, in the, in the route, basically. Yep. We got, we got the band van and we're now ready to quit our jobs and just go out on the road forever. That's the dream job of everyone, even mine. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a musician, so it's a, it's the a job. It's the dream of everyone, and um and of course, just um, in better times, there's one song that even in your opinion, from each one of you, want to advise, or maybe not. Let's say not advice that you maybe feel cl closer with that. Let's say you're forced to choose one, so because we have to advise music music songs to the people watching this interview. So let's start oh. from. What's the song where is he connected to? Yours cool. is my selection. <laughs> Shots. <laughs> I'll start with Luke. Oh, yeah, I guess he started. You are... um, mine's No One Needs Your Love because that's the first song we recorded. It's okay. the first song I wrote all the way. It's the first song I ever wrote. Um, So that's the one I still feel the best connection with. Okay. I'd say uh, Ride This Thing Out for me. Like, I love. I don't know. I just love everything about that song. Just oh. like the way it was written, the way we recorded it. You know, I mean, I love the riff. I love my solo. I, lo I love it all. So I'm going to say that. Yeah. And that just is exact diverse palette of music I spoke about earlier. Yeah, yeah, aggressive yeah. rocks, the pop feel. chorus, blues. Yeah. Yeah. Just, oh, that's a beautiful that's connection. I mean, it's a feeling because you're, it's changing influences. That's what creates a little bit of difference in the sound. And, uh, mm -hmm. and as well as saying to the people that they can hear this even better. Because even the sound can sound, you know, like unique, one sound. There is always, you know, the, 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 the shades of the sound as well. As well. They make your own sound unique, and like every other yeah. one as well. But I think as well something in the personality. Because like I told you, you are at perfect front when each one of you has a unique personality. And I saw that, come on, I mean, I saw myself in the social media, I was like, you have the, the, the personality that can stand on the stage, can have fun on the stage. Like you are on the stage. You belong to the stage, in my opinion. And uh, I am not that, never wrong about that. As to Black Braid, a black metal musician, now he is uh, touring all around the world and he has to, 2000K in, in an interview that we did 20 years ago. He basically is playing everywhere. He's a Native American guy trying to play black metal from Norway. So imagine how hard that was and now it's one of the most requested artists in the world in, uh, in the in, let's say in the underground uh, black metal scene in, in the world so i i'm not getting wrong with that i should do a talent scout one day i'm not wrong with that and of course i'm gonna yeah. send guys there that the, the, if i have it's a system festival in europe like rodburn i'm gonna send you the link and the application form for any year you want to go but for sure i know they are gonna pick you and I am sure of it. I can bet. And, and we can do an interview like in one year and say, and I will say I was right. I, we can make a bet here and now. We've been told many times that like Europe would, that, like Europe would really appreciate you guys. Yeah. It's like yeah. American crowds are like, eh. It's like European oh. crowds really appreciate glam rock and yeah. art and that kind of stuff. Yeah, especially like Netherlands, Belgium, Italy, and uh, England, all this country, Spain, let's say the northeast, no, northwest of Europe, north, middle, west. Yeah. Old parts of Europe. Yeah. Really appreciate that old country. That country already, let's say. And I have to come back to the other interview that I did before because they wanted to do the endings. I'm going to keep oh this up tonight. Oh, There's a bunch of girls that are just playing and they are doing uh, confusion. Okay, so it was a really pleasure, guy, really meeting, talking with you. And uh, I think your music is really, really, really stunning. And uh, it has that sound that 
is going on a lot right now and it's not going on like a dead end to to die it's just gonna stay for a long long time and i think because you're gonna evolve with the times as well with your all influences from jazz blues and hard rock you're gonna evolve of course so i'm gonna do an interview after your tour and at the end of the okay. year or whatever and i'm and and i will tell you i was right i know for sure i'm excited for it well i'll be i'll come back on here and let you tell us you're right yeah but when you, glad the, add the ep we're gonna do the interview speaking about the ep digging more about the ep in each song and everything so i wish you the best guy really you're really talented and uh, for what i can see you're really your music is really worth a lot of sight we need more of this music so it was a pleasure meeting you thank you for all your time and uh, i wish you really all the best but I know that it's going to go, go well. I know. I'm sure of that. So, thank you, thank thank you, you so, so much. much. Have a happy new year. Happy, we already have in the new year. Happy 2024. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Bye.